the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Join Tanya Davies in episode 118 to discover the power of the strategic slowdown, learn how to heal, overcome stress and design a fulfilling future with intention. When we are on our devices, our computers, our iPads, our laptops, we are stuck in foveal vision or in tunnel vision as we know it. When we're in that mode, our body automatically goes to the sympathetic nervous system and it stops us from resting and digesting and all our organs operating properly. And the longer we stay in that space, the more chance we are of moving into health conditions, long-term health conditions, chronic stress, autoimmune conditions, that kind of thing, because we are perpetually living in that freaked out state all the time but when we manage to slow down we can start to do the real work and I really want to emphasize this to all of your listeners because it's a myth that I have to deal with all the time to deal with your work does not mean that your your stuff I should say your traumas does not mean you have to relive them Mm. we do not need to sit down and talk for hours and hours and weeks months and years about our traumas to overcome them what we do need to do though is give ourselves permission to lean into the learning behind the trauma so we can release the emotional load. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, And I'm honoured to be your guide in this journey of empowering and healing. Today, we've got a very special episode tailored just for you. Whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope, a reminder that you are not alone. On this episode, we've got a special guest who will share their story that will resonate at the core of our mission a story that illuminates the power of love, (laughs) resilience, and unwavering strength that lies within each of us. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let the healing begin. But before we dive into today's narrative, a quick reminder that if if you find value in what we share, consider supporting us and subscribing and sharing and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach the hearts and spread the message of healing through love. Our very special guest today, Tanya Davies, is the success slow coach. Isn't that fascinating? She is a highly accomplished professional, renowned in her strategic thinking, coaching expertise, speaking engagements, therapeutic practices, and consulting services. She is an expert authority in and around how to slow down to achieve that success. And we're going to dive into some very personal spaces today. Hi, Tanya. Welcome today. Thanks, Charlene. It's great to be here. Well, I love it. Every conversation with you is a great opportunity. I love what you bring, this this concept of people slowing down so that, you know, maybe some parts of them can speed up. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Slowing down. We live in such a ridiculous fast-paced environment where we are bombarded with information and requests of us, our time, on a, on a daily basis. And it's hard to find the, the me, the us in all of this. And, Absolutely. and like, I love all of the processes that you bring. So many different modalities as well. And uh, from the outside looking in, it looks complicated. So I, look, I'd, if it's okay, I'd love to start our journey today talking about trauma. Because yeah. many of our listeners uh, have previously or still are recovering from trauma and I'd like to talk about it in all of its di- di- you know disguises because it mm. just doesn't always turn up as just one thing so can we have a chat like first of all what is trauma and how does it turn up yeah look trauma is actually the body's 
normal response to an abnormal situation. Let's put it that way. And so trauma in itself, as you said, it, it comes in many disguises. And it's pretty sneaky. It really is. It could be everything from your best friend saying something to you at the age of three that really, really hurt. It really stuck with you to some what we would call tier one traumas where we could be in major car accidents or a terrorist situation or horrific situations like that. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But our traumas, all of us, every single one of us own traumas, unfortunately. They come in many ways, shapes and sizes. But I think one of the biggest things that gives me hope every single day working with people with trauma is that you don't have to live with the trauma there is something always always to be learnt from the trauma for us to grow and for us to evolve as human beings beyond it but unfortunately when we're stuck in the memory memory and the emotions of the trauma that's when we find our lives being really overwhelming and clouded and as though we cannot get out of the quicksand that we're in does that make sense? Oh, on every level. So so how do we know, like what physical things happen for us or what things might we be experiencing that could be trauma-related? So we're only seeing what's happening now and we maybe haven't even unpacked the things that have happened that have created the trauma or they might be a distant memory or we might have squashed them down and made them less or like there's lots yeah. of different things. But how... How can it be for our listeners today? How can they identify that there might be an issue there? Well, I'm going to get real personal here. I'm going to come from my space on this one because as an overachieving, driven woman, I had it, I had, I had it all sorted, or at least I thought I did. Now, I've had many operations in my life, <clears throat> and that's the other thing I should point out is that when we go undergo the process of um, going under, our body actually creates a physical trauma reaction to that. And so it can come out in some really unusual ways. And one of the things, as you you mentioned in my introduction, I'm the success slow coach. One of the things that I'm a very fast talker, um, I, I exist very fast in this world, you may have noticed, but I'm absolutely passionate about strategically slowing down. And why? What does that mean? Well, for me personally, one of the biggest things that came out from me when I was suffering at the worst of my traumas was the inability, the physical, mental and emotional and spiritual inability to stop. It was almost impossible. And the moments that I did take that pause, should I ever, from let's just say recovery from an operation, those moments became almost even more traumatic on their own because in that stillness, all the stuff started to come up. And so that I'd become more busy and I'd volunteer even more in this scenario and I'd try and cram in more courses and I'd try and cram everything in so that there was just no time to stop and deal with the stuff that was literally staring me straight in the face that needed to be sorted. But some of your listeners will probably be able to lean into some of these concepts. What about people pleasing? <laughs> that's just that's just a little one, just people pleasing, but also the hyper independence of the warrior woman. That's a classic for me. I mean, one of my one of my lifelong heroes is Wonder Woman, but there does become this point where you have to be able to step back and go it's not a fight. There's no fight here. The only fight is me trying to reject the healing that needs to be done with regards to the trauma. Mm. And so some of these symptoms that you can see in some very subtle ways, like I was a high functioning, quite traumatic, um, you know, type A personality driven woman, that in itself starts to make you go, hang on a minute, What's she running from? What's she so busy and avoiding? So avoidance is another big one. If you find somebody that uh, is absolutely going out of their way to not do the inner work, it's a classic sign for starters. But there are so many ways that trauma can show up and it will be sometimes quite different for men and for women as to how we, you know, man up and face our issues, et cetera. But for women at the same time, we like to still fall back on the someone's going to save us scenario this is not something that someone's going to save you from you are the only person in this situation who needs to lean into your own version of self-leadership to be able to work through those traumas so hopefully I've given you just a fraction of the ways in which this trauma can show up for people but very much so if you're finding that you're distracting yourself away from healing that's a pretty good symptom there's stuff to do <laughs> um ADHD yes life is a distraction. <laughs> 
I love it. And I am a recovering people pleaser and I'm still recovering because even though now I've shifted through, you know, I can see things differently, I still catch myself sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I mean, what's that about? Isn't that interesting? So, yes, it's a, uh, and I think also being first born as well, mm -hmm. that uh, it comes with its own level of responsibility. So there's lots of different layers in there. I love this. Now, how does the rushing women's syndrome connect to what you're looking at here? Is it the same thing with a different name? Not necessarily because rushing win women's syndrome by its very nature has the term women in it. Men in, in this scenario as well have the exact same issues coming up. There's just not enough time for that. I don't have time. I'm time poor, all this language we use around time. Well, that's just an excuse because at the end of the day, we, we build up our traumas to be probably 20 times worse than the physical reality of what we went through. We hold on to those memories and those emotions. And one thing we do know from science is that our memories, generally speaking, when we go back and we indulge ourselves in our memories and we put them through the filters of our current reality, they're not even close to being 50% true. Yeah, we like to delete, we distort, and we generalize constantly, even mm. with our own stuff, even the stuff we were there and present for. So if we're looking at women's uh, rusting women's syndrome, it is very much about exactly what I've spoken about. But if we look at the core of it, it's not it's not just women. We mm. are looking at anyone, children, mm. men, the elderly is, is is quite an interesting one as well. In my clinic, I do deal with a lot of people, like one gentleman in particular, who held on to his trauma that he had at the age of two for 70 years. Still wow. not willing to deal with it. Wow. There's so and it's a choice. And there's so much in that. So, yeah. like for many of our listeners, they're recovering from real trauma that yeah. is a physical threat to their life. Absolutely. And for some of them, it's family trauma. So, previously, and some of them yep. inside a domestic violence situation, which is happening to them right now. And on, on several occasions, it could be that that's just a repeat of the previous trauma. So they've got that yeah. pattern from the family violence and now they're living that in the domestic space. So even if you're healing from or still involved in something that could be threatening, there are ways that you can give that space between thought and action and slowing down is one of the yeah. big ways. So you know, obviously make sure that you're safe if you're listening to this podcast. But, yes, you know, slowing down and just taking that time, and that's what I'd like to know, what would what are some of the things that you can share with us today about how we can physically, mentally, spiritually, how can we slow down and give ourselves that space to heal? Can you share some of those with us? Absolutely. But the first thing I really want to acknowledge from what you said in that little package there was the one thing for me is that trauma comes in so many different packages with so many different bows on it. But at the same time, your body's reaction, all of our physical reactions to trauma are the same. Our body is going to move into the sympathetic nervous system. And that's a big fancy way of saying that basically we're going to move into fight or flight mode. And for some of us who are still in the extreme of it, the, the life threat mode of that function is also basically what we call freeze. And some people don't even realize that they're doing the freeze component. But have you ever felt yourself just catching your breath in those moments? You've just realized you've been holding your breath. You've been freezing. And it's a micro freeze, but it's a freeze nonetheless, because the body has to go through a traffic light system in that moment of that trauma. And it goes, is what we're experiencing right now based on our values and our previous experience and the environment we're in, is this a life threat? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's not a life threat, but am I even safe? Oh, okay, I'm safe. So now I can throw, move through to the green light on the traffic light, and that's that social engagement piece. Yeah. And I think that happens in a microsecond. Mm. And when you catch your breath in that and you're holding your breath, that's your body's way of just going, hold the organism just safely for a moment. Are we okay? Are we okay? Are we okay to engage? Mm. And when you know those things, you know that there's some work to do on yourself. So in answering your broader question there, what are some of the things we can do to start moving down that slower path? Well, one of the things we have to emphasize is that when the body goes into the sympathetic nervous system, it doesn't work properly. And as we know, and we've all probably heard it before, we need a little bit of movement into the sympathetic nervous system during our day to keep us safe from things. So, for example, when that saber-toothed tiger arrives at the cave door still, you know, well, that's all happening to us right now. But the equivalent in this day and age is your phone alarm going off. It's that 
Google alarm waking you up in the morning like it did to me this morning shocked me like crazy. What's happening is your body is automatically moving into that system whether you like it or not. And there are some little tricks and tools we can use to get out of it. But let's talk about the pressure cooker effect because if we've got trauma and we keep adding more stress on top of stress, on top of stress, on top of stress, what happens to a pressure cooker when you overpack the pressure cooker and don't release the steam through self-care and through doing the trauma and the deep work, the shadow work we talk about? The pressure cooker explodes. And I would hate that to happen to anyone, but it happens all the time in this day and age. And we medicate it. Mm. Now, this is not something that necessarily needs medication. Now, I do say big, big disclaimer here for everyone. There is a place in the world for that. I am not against that. But the place that I work in and working with the conscious and subconscious mind, my job is to help people get out of the fight or flight mode by slowing down long enough to move our brain waves to a place where we're safe enough to get out of our own way and heal. Mm. Your subconscious mind has got all the healing and all of the answers it needs right now. There's too many obstacles in front of us, one upon the next, and that's the filters of our current reality. That's the trauma. That's the abuse. That's the bullying. That's all this stuff that's a violence that's come into our world. It could even be this, the exposure to the media. All of this accumulates to keep us in that stuck state. So some of those techniques I use with people to slow them down, it can be as simple as, get this one, it can be as simple as actually just engaging your peripheral vision. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. When we are on our devices, our computers, our iPads, our laptops, we are stuck in foveal vision or in tunnel vision as we know it. When we're in that mode, our body automatically goes to the sympathetic nervous system and it stops us from resting and digesting and all our organs operating properly. And the longer we stay in that space, the more chance we are of moving into health conditions, long-term health conditions, chronic stress, autoimmune conditions, that kind of thing, because we are perpetually living in that freaked out state all the time. But when we manage to slow down, we can start to do the real work. And I really want to emphasize this to all of your listeners because it's, it's, a, it's a myth that I have to deal with all the time. To deal with your work does not mean, that your, your stuff, I should say, your traumas, does not mean you have to relive them. Mm. We do not need to sit down and talk for hours and hours and weeks, months and years about our traumas to overcome them. What we do need to do, though, is give ourselves permission to lean into the learning behind the trauma so we can release the emotional load. It's all mm. vibration. I mean, I'm sure, if, I'm sure knowing you, Charlene, you've spoken about frequency plenty of times on this podcast. So I don't need to tell anyone right now the importance of raising your frequency. And we cannot do that when we're not safe and we're not willing to give ourselves permission to slow down enough to do this work. We cannot do this rushing. Uh, oh, on every level. And uh, safety for our listeners is paramount. And uh, you need to find a way to feel safe. And that can be the simplest things. Look, it can be having a hot chocolate. Yeah. That, that can bring you that level of safety. Having someone that's safe to talk to, that can bring you that level of safety. Look, for me, it was even putting extra locks on the door. Like yep. that made me feel safer. So on every level, there's different things that we can do to make ourselves feel safe. I love the peripheral vision and uh, it explains perfectly why. Well, so we live on Linear Park, which is on the torrent, mm. and we, as much as we possibly can, get out there in the greenery and it's for the fact that we're looking around, yes. for the fact that we're not just looking forward, the for that we're looking for the frogs, that we're playing with the trees, that we're, we're in amongst it and we've got obviously that grounded energy feet on the ground. But it's also that there's everything is happening and it's 360 degrees. It's up and above and everywhere around. And it Absolutely. does. It takes you away from this, I don't know, this myopic vision that we have nine to seven um, yep. staring at uh, at the screen on every level. Yep. I love it. I love it. So much to unpack. Now, I like you mentioned breathing and mm. you mentioned vision and and mention safety what are some other things that we can we can all of us listeners can do to help us basically get from our challenge rather than through it how yep. can we lift our vibrations so that we can be in that victor state rather than victim state and mm -hmm. and, and move away from that blame that excuse and that denial and lean into that uh, ownership and responsibility and accountability of the situation even though 
you may not be the person that created it. Being there, it's still your own a percentage of physically being there. Yeah, now you sound like an insurance company, Charlene. Absolutely, <laughs> you do. <laughs> Yeah, That's just by the true. pure proximity, pure proximity of being in the so-called wrong place at the wrong time. I like to think it is the right place at the right time because from that opportunity of trauma comes the beautiful golden moment of recovery. And that's your recovery. That's only yours and nobody else's. And so by you overcoming your own story, that doesn't give permission for what happened to be an everyday thing and an okay thing. Absolutely not. But your journey, the, the biggest gift, the golden moment I get to see in my office time and time again is when somebody realizes that they can get rid of all of those filters in front of them and find their own aha moments, their own healing, and not just overcome their stuff, but absolutely blossom and thrive through their stuff. To go on and either they may, may wish to help other people on their journey that's not for everybody, but absolutely, it certainly is for me. And, and look, just for context here, like I'm, I spoke before, like I've been through interesting traumas over my time. And I can well and truly talk about them. So it's, it, you know when you dealt with it, you can talk about it without the emotion behind it, without the load behind it, the resentment, the anger. Once all that's gone and the tank is emptied, it becomes a teaching tool. And I know from your life story as well, Charlene, we've got to know each other. We are both in that place now where if somebody can just lean into understanding that your trauma can be somebody else's healing moment too, that story behind it, what a gift. Mm. But it doesn't necessarily mean you ha that has to be your goal for everyone. And I have plenty of people that come through my clinic on a daily basis that their goal is just so that they can get out of feeling this in this stuck state. And what are the, some of the ways they can do that? One of the things I'm actually going to say first, though, is something I don't actually want any of your listeners to do. There's a big don't, okay? So many people say, I want you to do self-care, and I think you should lean into meditation. Let's lean into meditation. One of the worst things somebody with trauma can do is lean into an unguided meditation space. Oh, if you've got lots of voices and lots of trauma and all that going on inside of you, the one of the last things you probably want to be doing is sitting with all that without someone holding your hand. And that comes down to that safety piece. Yeah, we've spoken about it. Safety is number one and paramount in all of your self-care activities and your healing to get move through this trauma. Safety is number one. And I've seen people try a lot of the times to say to me, look, I tried meditation. It wasn't for me. I'm, I'm too busy. My mind's always racing. And the thing is, all your stuff, your subconscious mind's finding that moment, that quiet moment where you've decided to sit in the lotus position and become a yogi, to all of a sudden go, yeah, I don't think so. You've got all this to deal with. Here it is on a platter. When you're doing it with somebody either now, and, I, and that's either in person or somebody through a guided meditation on, on an app or something like that, those guided moments, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind are actually working in unison to go, you're safe. When it's a blank canvas, not safe. Yeah, and I don't say that for the for the very, um, you know, highly experienced and advanced meditators out there. They know what I'm talking about. But those people who are just leaning into this work, that is something I prefer you do with someone holding your hand for you at that time. But some of the other things we can do, for me, for me, it's grabbing a good book. Now, that's not a distraction. That's just a moment to go, Tanya. I just want you to focus on one thing right now not the 20,000 other things you've planned for the day I want you to just settle in for this moment 15 20 minutes and I just want you to become hyper focused in this moment on this one activity because I'm going to allow your body to rest in this moment so reading in itself is simple thing and I'm not talking about personal development reading or anything like that that's getting you jazzed up again I'm just talking about something that's going to take you away in that moment from your world and not using it as an excuse or a distraction or escapism I'm actually using it with intent to focus. That's quite different oh. because what your body is doing is scattered itself for so long. We're coming back to a single point of focus so that when you can lean in to do the work to relieve yourself of the trauma and these big emotions, you can stay focused in that moment. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. My equivalent to that, because being totally dyslexic, that's actually painful to read, is, is, getting, 
It's getting in the garden and uh, yes. you know, research now shows us that, you know, literally getting your fingers in the dirt releases particular chemicals in your body yes. that actually will calm you down. And this is why at any given day you'll say dirt under my fingernails because I, I love to get out there and muck around in the garden, whether it's the vegetables, the herbs or or one of the plants. I just, mm. it really makes a difference to me yep. too. And then also it's the groundedness as well. Also with the ADHD, it's hyper focus. I have to focus on what I'm doing. Um, and it's also that nurturing and caring part as well. Yeah. My kids have all left home. So well, who am I going to yeah. take care of? The 101 pot plants. <laughs> you see the garden, the garden will love you back too. I mean, science is literally showing us that these, these garden beings that are out there, these trees, these plants are actually loving you back. So go out there and sing to your plants I because do. you're going to get that love back. <laughs> I do. I sing to them. I talk to them. And David even says, Charlene, you're touching that plant inappropriately. <laughs> But I'm just anyway. We won't go there. It's a different story. But you but know, a tree, I hug way too much too. I'm, I'm I get you. I love it. So look, there are so many ways that we can slow down, and there's so many ways that our trauma can teach us. And you've shared with us, Tanya, that trauma is just lots of different shades of grey. It's not just one thing, and also that we might not even know we're in trauma. We're seeing the end result here, but we might not even know that trauma has caused that. And and I love that you said we don't have to go through all the nitty gritty. We just mm. need to say, okay, what are you here to teach us? So that we can go from that space all the way through to healing and having our trauma teach us. And for those of you who want to pay it forward, and most of the humans on this planet do, is to how can you, what you've learned, how can you teach others? And uh, I think fundamentally it's the human condition of making a difference for other people. And I stand in a room and I ask who here wants to make a difference. 90% of the room puts their hand up. So I think it's how we are. I think we're more of a collective than we even imagine we are. And I love this. Everything you've said here is, is important and relevant and it's amazing. I want to know how do people get to spend quality time with you? What Where's your practice? What do you do? Have you got any books? Have you got free resources? Talk to us and tell us all of that. Sure. Well, I'm actually the director of the Mindful Impact Wellness Hub, and that's actually located in the Adelaide Hills, the beautiful Adelaide Hills. We've also got a studio there as well. So it's quite an interesting little complex that we've built, and there's multiple practitioners in there. But that's where I live. But I also work online as well, and I work with people all over the world. And I do one-on-one -on -one work with building people. I'm actually currently building a course for those that – just want to put their toe in the water and not quite ready to commit to that deep dive yet so that's coming watch that space but really to do that deep dive one-on-one -on -one work with me you just need to reach out on my website and I I absolutely make it my personal mission that when I'm with somebody in this space it's like I'm their snuggly teddy bear and I don't mean that you don't get to cuddle me until the end um what I do mean by that though is we've always got, we've got, you most of us have got that favorite toy that no matter what happens in the world no matter what happens when you've got that toy you know you're okay and I've heard it from so many people over the years that I've worked with that when they my voice is with them in session when they're going through this work I'm that safe place for them to be able to let that stuff go they tell me stuff that nobody they've never told anybody else before and that stays in the vault uh -huh. and that in itself builds that safety it will not go anywhere. It stays in that vault. And once they know that, once that groundwork is there, it's actually much easier than they think. It really is because it's one of the biggest feedback moments I get is I don't know what I was waiting for. I made it to be so much more than it was going to ever be. And that is not to belittle in any way what people are going through. Um, I've been in this for quite some time now and I've dealt with some of the most horrific traumas I couldn't even make up myself that people have been through uh, and my office is very much a cathartic place to let that go. Oh, I love it. I love it, Tanya. So many ways to get in contact with her and, and Tanya, as one of our local girls here in Adelaide, is also one of the practitioners who assists us on our PAM for days and we've got one coming up very shortly. So if you're a practitioner and you're a little curious about how you can pay it forward to survivors of family and domestic violence, we have now a global community. We're all around the world. We are running PAM for days. So think day spa on steroids where our survivors come along and receive 
receive this beautiful love and affection and hold the frequency for them in whatever modality it is that you use so that they can have this experience of healing and it lifts their level of self-worth and self-esteem and it helps helps them move through through their own trauma. Obviously, it's not the deeper work, but it is an opportunity for them to see themselves differently and to move forward. And we had so many success stories of women coming back after coming as a participant one year, coming back as an exhibitor the next year because they've kept the proximity of, of the people that are there to make a difference. So if you're here as a survivor and you're listening, please, we are looking for people to come along to our next event, reach out to Healing Through Love. And if you're a practitioner, please reach out. We're looking for practitioners, uh, especially we've got one coming up in Sydney uh, and we've also got several in the States and also Hong Kong. And uh, we're excited to say that we're starting in Europe as well soon. So uh, we're very excited to hold this space. Look, in, I could talk to you all day, Tanya, and we know this to be true because we do. We get We do. <laughs> talk all day uh so like what would be your closing words of wisdom to our listeners today no matter what you'll be okay oh i love and I, I i deeply mean that because there is nothing in this life that you've been handed that you can't handle and if you're in the middle of it right now take a breath there is so much help around you just reach out but no matter what you will be okay oh I love this Tanya it rings true to mine and that is you've got this I believe that every human on this planet was designed with the answers inside of them you just need need to get that extracted <laughs> and uh, and and I just love it uh, uh, these are what these are one of the reasons why we're good friends and I love doing life with you it's a privilege and a pleasure to hold this frequency and have this conversation with you today if any of this resonated with you, and I'm sure all of it did, then reach out to Tanya on all of her platforms and her details will be in the show notes and also in the show description. It's a blessing to have this conversation with you today. It's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Tanya. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Music